All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Dorian Wanzer. I am here. We're at our fourth uh, Advocacy Leadership Program webinar, and today we're going to be discussing National Health Center Week, uh, which is coming up next month, August 12th through 18th. And uh, there are a number of things I want to go over, uh, mainly about the theme and how you can participate, but also how uh, Health Center Week is a really great time to engage your community and to recruit advocates. Um, I also want to provide some tips and tricks about participating in the week, event ideas, and I'm going to uh, show you a couple of things on our website in case you haven't had a chance to visit it, uh, visit it just yet. So we will get started without any further ado. Another reminder, if you have to leave early from this webinar or, uh, or you can't make it, even though you wouldn't be here if you couldn't make it, um, it will be available at, via recording. As always, I will follow up with an email and share the link with you guys, and you'll be able to access it. And then just as a courtesy to everybody who's on the call, if you uh, could keep your lines muted so we don't get any background noise or, or if you're, you know, trying to multitask so that other people who are listening in can are able to have uh, full attention and, and hear everything. So. Uh, this year, our theme for National Health Center Week is Celebrating Health Center's Home of America's Healthcare Heroes. Uh, we felt like it was a great year to really honor the, the patients, the providers, the volunteers, board members, all of those individuals that make the health center movement happen, that, you know, really are living and breathing the mission and also doing what they can to support health centers in providing quality, affordable, and accessible care to people across the country. Uh, this is a copy of our, or a version of our poster uh, this year that we, we've been sharing. Actually, this is the uh, Facebook cover photo, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, as you can see, uh, we've we've definitely taken kind of the, the hero theme and ran with it as we have uh, our characters here, we don't have names for them yet, so if anybody has any suggestions, uh, let me know. But uh, we are very excited about it, and I think a lot of people, from what I've seen, have really taken this uh, theme and run with it. Uh, so we have two hashtags that we're using. As always, we have NHCW and then the year. So NHCW18 is one of the hashtags, and then the other one is CHD Superpower. Uh, the week, as I mentioned, is August 12th through 18th, so it will kick off um, in a little less than a month. Um, and if you have any questions or need further information or would like to access images that you can share, uh, access the National Health Center Week store, you can go to our website, healthcenterweek.org. So how does National Health Center Week tie into advocacy leadership? Well. Health Center Week takes place each year. It's always during the second full week of August. And really, NAC and, and the Health Center Advocacy Network or the advocacy team brings together communities across the country, brings together health center staff, patients from across the country to really recognize the contributions that, that health centers make to our healthcare system and highlight issues that are important in terms of advocacy, in terms of primary health care, in terms of community health. And it really gives uh, it gives individuals who who may have not been as involved in the health center movement or or as aware of health center advocacy a chance to join conversations um, and and really make a change and spread the word about about the great work that health centers have done across you know basically for the past five decades. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity to to really showcase your leadership skills, especially as an advocacy leader at your health center. It's a, it's a great opportunity to take that role and, you know, perhaps suggest an event or manage an event, um, you know, do something that is focused on staff recognition or or suggest to your board or to your leader, to your, you know, the, the CEO perhaps of your health center that this would be a good time to to reach out to potential advocates or to partner with other organizations in the community that uh, that are also doing great work to promote community health. Uh, so there are a number of way a number of ways in which you can kind of swing it, but I think it's a great way to to have fun with it and and not so much focus on you know they, you know we talked about engaging legislators, we talked about um, 
engaging on social media for advocacy, but this is really more of a community-based thing where it's people to people and you've got an opportunity to be face-to-face -face and, and speak to the health center movement. So National Health Center Week, we typically kick off in May. Uh, I'm sure that many of you were on the National Health Center Week kickoff call. It kind of gives us the the couple of months to get everybody prepared and, and and know what the theme is and to have time to figure out what they want to do to celebrate during the week. But what I like to look at it is like a, a National Health Center Week to-do list. So by the time May rolls around, you should have your list in place. And that could be a number of things. But here's something that's kind of generic. So you might have on your to-do list that you want to recruit advocates. You definitely want to uh, confirm uh, and, and manage and then sub ultimately submit your events to us on the National Health Center Week website. You can have an opportunity for your advocates or, or people in your community to take action in some type of way. That could be that could mean that you're asking them to, you know, thank their legislators for, for their support. That could be, you know, asking them to attend your community health fair or special event. Uh, that could be, you know, p passing out flyers in the community, letting people know that they can come, uh, you know, they can come to the local health center and they can be seen regardless of their ability to pay. Um, and it's also an opportunity to kind of build off of your advocacy strategic plan and think about how you can uh, honor and recruit advocates, engage with legislators, showcase data that that really speaks to your health center's operation and, and how they're, you know, providing innovative care in the community. You can also uh, request a, a proclamation from your, from any level of government. That could be city council, the mayor's office. It could be the governor's office. Um, it could, you know, be a city manager. Um, and then it's also a great, a great, great, great time to get publicity for your health center. And by publicity, that could be publishing an op-ed, that could be a public service announcement. Some people have been, um, in recent years, uh, reaching out to their television and radio stations to maybe get a quick uh, TV spot to promote the events of their week and also to, you know, just speak out about what what their community health center does in the community and, and the, the contribution that it makes economically and how it's helping people who are uninsured, how it could be helping special populations. So you want to kind of take the time to come up with your to-do list. What is what is important to you and your health center in terms of advocacy and community outreach? And then you can kind of shape what you want to do for the week from there. But luckily, uh, we in, in the recent years, we've had a number of focus days, which I'll get into later, that kind of help you shape out what you can do during the week and how you can celebrate. So as I said, I think that when you're hosting, when, when it comes to National Health Center Week, obviously there's always a, a, a folks on staff who, who gravitate towards planning events, maybe, you know, there's always somebody that, you know, say, hey, I'm going to lead up the Health Center Week Committee or whatever. I think that as an advocacy leader, um, it's a great time to showcase those leadership skills. And again, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, writing out a strategic plan or starting a social media account as we've discussed in the past. It could be, you know, taking on a special project. You know, we we want to have a health fair this year. I'll be the one who will, you know, who's going to reach out to the other community partners that want to have a booth there. I'll be the one that goes to the local schools and lets them know that this is where kids can come to get their back to school screening. Uh, you can be the person that's working on, you know, the, your overall health center message and kind of establish and, and a chance to practice that elevator speech that we discussed back in March you know, as you're speaking to these community partners and other organizations to participate in your events. It's also a great time to observe uh, and, and network. So by that I mean if you are working, you know, each year we, we focus on special populations. Let's say you know that there's an organization uh, that is work, that works with uh, the, a homeless population and, and your community health center happens to serve um, homeless patients. You know, it's an opportunity to network with them, see what they're doing, see how you can help, how can you guys cross-promote what you're doing. And you can also take the time to observe other things within the week or maybe other events and observances that, that other organizations are, are planning to do within the community. Um, again, it is time to be visible. You can use your leadership skills, you know, the same concept that 
applies to getting a meeting with a member of Congress or, or, or a state legislator is the same thing that applies to perhaps reaching out to your local paper and, and, and getting them to publish your letter to the editor or to your opinion editorial that speaks to the great work of health centers. And then, of course, we always encourage you to invite legislators uh, to your health center to see the operation during the week, especially since it typically falls during uh, the congressional recess. So it's a great time for you to, to continue to nurture those relationships that you have with elected officials. And as we've said in previous uh, webinars and, and information that we've shared, you don't want to just reach out to, to local leaders and legislators when there's a problem or when there's the health center funding cliff or when you are in dire need of support. You want to make sure that you're keeping those connections up year-round. So again, advocacy in the community can look like a number of things. I've heard actually gotten some great feedback from some of you about events that you guys are doing in terms of voter registration, about how you're honoring advocates, about what you're doing to uh, seek out media coverage and all of that stuff. So think about in terms of events you can do because we focus a lot on events during National Health Center. We think about how your events can showcase that advocacy within the community. So that could be honoring or recruiting advocates. And what I mean by that is, especially this year, think about the theme. You know, we've got, we're celebrating uh, healthcare heroes. So that could be celebrating unsung heroes. That could be honoring, you know, folks at, at your health center that maybe do a lot of great work uh, with patients and maybe they don't always, they're not always, you know, at, at the forefront of everything and, and maybe the first person to be recognized. It could be something like that. Um, Again, it's a great time to engage with legislators, and if, even if you're unable to get a legislator to come to your health center or you're, a, you're unable to get a meeting, you can still, you know, think about maybe sending an award or publishing an article that speaks to, you know, oh, congressman or congresswoman, blah, 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 did this this year in support of health centers, and this is why we've been able to keep our doors open. You know, this is why we've been able to keep going. Um, I had mentioned before showcasing data. That's something that we also would encourage you guys to do this year um, in terms of your publicity and, and how you're advocating. A lot of times, you know, depending on who you're speaking to, you know, some things resonate with with certain individuals. You could say, you know, this is, you know, we, we're serving, you know, people who are really, you know, kind of, on, you know, down and out. You know, they, these are uninsured people. These are vulnerable people. But maybe for others, it might be more beneficial to say, well, you know, because of our health center, you know, this this percentage of, of people actually have jobs in, in our city, which is, you know, contributing to economic growth. And, you know, we're actually providing, you know, this number of screenings each year, which is giving, which is making sure that, you know, kids are going back to school healthy. You know, actually having those real data points that you can speak to that show uh, just, you know, I, the reach of, of what you're doing in the community. And again, proclamations and public service announcement, announcements um, are also great ways to get the word out and to kind of show that there's support from not only from other community members and patients and staff, but there's actual real recognition um, within your state that's, you know, actually stating that this is something that we're recognizing every year, National Health Center Week. Um, so just think about those things when you're thinking in terms of events. I also want, I'm going to uh, switch gears for a quick second, and I wanted to share with you guys some other um, other activity and event ideas. I'm, go I'm going to share my screen uh, quickly. And I did just get a message um, from someone about connectivity issues. Um, if anybody else is having issues, please let me know. Uh, I, everything seems good on my end. I, I'm not uh, seeing anything, but if, if it continues, then we will uh, then we will work it out. So right now, I am sharing my screen. You guys should be able to see uh, my monitor. I'm on the National Health Center Week website. Um, as I mentioned before, when it comes to uh, to National Health Center Week. There are a number of event ideas you can do, and we kind of, and I kind of went over this, but if you go to our website, you'll be able to see there are 
if, if you, let's say you don't have, you know, maybe the space for, or maybe you, you just haven't thought about doing something like a community health fair uh, or, or having a legislator. Well, what if you're getting a new building? What if you have some new construction? You know, another great thing that you can do during that National Health Center Week is to, you know, schedule your groundbreaking or ribbon cutting for something new that's happening at your health center during that week. And then, of course, you can share those images with us, and we can definitely promote it. Um, some people have really uh, taken the contest idea and run with it in the past. You know, we, we also do a contest each year, a picture and video contest, but you can have any, uh, your own version of a contest at your health center, uh, you know, and, and that can be that can be anything that you want it to be. And there's some ideas if you go uh, here on our website and you can see. Um, I did mention before that there are some focus days. We do encourage you to focus on those special populations, and I'll get into that as well. We, we always honor our public housing health center grantees, health care for the homeless, and then, of course, our agricultural worker health day. And uh, those are all things that uh, are, great, are great to recognize and to share. So I'm going to go uh, back now. You guys should be able to see the presentation. And if anybody has any issues with that, please uh, message me. We will go back. So as I just mentioned, uh, the first way to make health center to ensure that your health center week will be great um, is to take a look at the focus days. So again, each year we've we've we traditionally always celebrated the special props days that I just mentioned, but. Since last year, we've been doing a focus day, which really is centered on advocacy, if you think about it. Um, this year, we're going to kick off on Sunday with Legislative Appreciation Day. This is a good day to not only recognize legislators that have supported health centers and, uh, in the past year, but also those staff members, um, either at the state office or in the con or at the congressional office here in Washington, D.C., that have may maybe been your point of contact, maybe been that person that's been responsive to you um, and, and ensured that you're able to set up your meetings and, uh, and to connect with your legislators. On Monday, uh, we're going to, that's going to begin, get, going to be the big day. It's going to be honoring our healthcare heroes. Uh, some of you uh, may be aware that we uh, have partnered up, the advocacy team and the communications team have partnered up to do a contest that actually recognizes our health center heroes. Uh, nominations are uh, due by July 27th, and they've been open on that day. Uh, we will be recognizing the person that is, uh, that is chosen for that. We're also just going to take some time to really go to, to, to kick off Health Center Week, and, and I don't want to spoil it. It's a, a little bit of a surprise. We are going to have some, some special individuals who've been um, integral and supportive of the healthcare movement to kind of kick off Health Center Week um, uh, during, that, during that big day on that first Monday. Uh, but it's a, it is a great time for, for you guys to think about who you would like to honor as well at, at the health center level and, and how you would like to honor them. Uh, Tuesday is going to be uh, Public Housing Health Centers Day. We're going to have a, a blog post that will be published um, on that day that will be shared out that will kind of highlight some of the work of our, of our public housing health center grantees. Um, we will also have some statistics and tidbits that we'll be posting on social media during the day, namely about, you know, the number of, of public housing residents that health centers serve and whatnot. Um, Wednesday has always been my favorite day of National Health Center Week. It is Healthcare for the Homeless Day. Uh, we, uh, again, we've actually worked with some folks from uh, Colorado Coalition for the Homeless. They did a really, really, really great write-up on uh, two individuals that have, that have been working at a particular health center uh, for years, and they kind of called them unsung heroes. Uh, we're going to, you know, honor them in a way, but we're also going to, again, cover those statistics of, of homeless health center grantees and the great work that we're doing. In terms of event ideas for that day, uh, Healthcare for the Homeless Day is a great time to maybe do like a community barbecue. Sometimes people will have uh, stations uh, available at, at their health center where people can come in, perhaps, you know, uh, clean up, uh, get food, get some, you know, sanitary items, things like that. Uh, you can be creative with it. but. Uh, 
but that is always a great day to celebrate and to think about those individuals that may not may otherwise go without care. Um, on Thursday, we have a Farm Worker Health Day, which is now actually Agricultural Worker Health Day, which is the the correct or more politically correct way to say it. Um, uh, same thing applies. We're going to have a, a, a media item that we can that will be shareable on our website, but also on social media. Uh, talking about the number of patients that we serve who, who are ag workers. And we're also going to be uh, doing some cross promotion uh, to talk about the Ag Worker 2020 campaign to make sure that there is accessible and affordable care for uh, migrant and seasonal agricultural workers um, as we move forward um, in, in expanding community health for all. Um, Friday, we're going to be doing a Patient and Board Appreciation Day. This is a great time, uh, especially since, you know, uh, the health centers have a 50, you know, percent patient board. Uh, to, to think about your, your consumer board members, it's a great time to think about, you know, maybe patients and, and volunteers and how you can, how you can recognize them or maybe give them something that, you know, really shows, hey, we appreciate you guys coming here for your health care and, and, and how you're also contributing to, you know, to a better, healthy, happier community. On Saturday, uh, we are doing Children's Health Day. Again, as, because Health Center Week is in August, it's a great time to have those back to school fairs, uh, to have those health screenings available for kids who are, who are trying to get ready for, you know, to, to kick off the school year and all of that. So you can think about your, your celebrations and your events around these days. And that's really, uh, you know, part of the reason why we do it. But it gives you an opportunity to plan and to have a little bit of structure around, around what you might want to do for the week. And now this doesn't, there's nothing of, it's set in stone. I know, uh, plenty of health centers that, uh, that have, uh, days and, and celebrations that they've done for years and they have, Absolutely uh, nothing to do with these days. That's fine. Some health centers do try to shape their events around these days, but it's really here uh, for you to to be able to inspire your celebrations, if you will, in events, but also giving you some content that you can share out during the week um, on your social channels and you know through and to your networks as well. So the big thing about that, as you are planning your events, is to share them with us. We really, really, really encourage you to post your National Health Center Week events. Number one reason is because we want to know what you're doing. We want to be able to say, you know, health centers have uh, across the country have had at least, you know, 1,800 events are happening across the country uh, across the country in honor of Health Center Week. You can go on our website, you, you can find an event near you, and this is how you can participate. Um, as soon as you get your event kind of laid out, just let us know. You can always go back and change it later. Um, the other thing is, is that by posting your events on our website, it gives us the ability to connect you with legislators uh, or potential sponsors that might be interested in your event. So a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, an elected official might say, I'm interested in, in, in going back to my district for, for National Health Center Week, but where should I go? And then that way we can say, well, you know what, there's a perfect event that's, that's right there. You can go there and, and, hey, while you're there, you know, you can get a picture, you can take a video, and you can, you know, perhaps even present this person with, you know, a token of your appreciation for coming uh, and supporting your event. Another reason why, as I just mentioned, is that there are, uh, you know, based on availability, sometimes sponsors that have, have an interest in certain regions and certain markets, uh, sometimes, you know, depending on the populations that you're serving, depending on your, your region, they might say, hey, we, we would like to go to that health center, maybe we, maybe we could support their event in some way. So by posting your events, it gives us that information and that intel so that you can make the most of it and possibly get a little bit more publicity and perhaps even financial support if that's available. In the past, uh, if you've participated in, in National Health Center Week, you may have remembered that there was a password that you had to input to uh, put your events up. That is no longer, it is much, much, much easier and straightforward now. Um, so you can just simply go on and I, I can actually show you again on our website, I'll share my screen um, and show you uh, where you can go. So uh, 
If you go to the National Health Center Week website and you see here this, you know, header, if you click on events, you would go to submit your event. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit slow here. <laughs> As I mentioned, if you've already submitted your event, you can always look up your event and you can, you know, plug in some information, look it up, and if you want to change it. But you would put in your event name, you can put in the date, the time, obviously the location, all of that, maybe any additional information. If you yourself, who's the advocacy leader, are also the event coordinator, you would put your information there. And then you can say, maybe you've already, maybe you've already, um, Maybe you've already invited uh, public officials or community leaders. You can put that in there as well. Um, so, so again, you know, it, it's, it's very straightforward, and we've tried to make it as easy as possible. And again, if you are actually just looking for events, you can also go to our events on a map page, and there you're, you'll be able to just literally go on a map. You can see what's going on in what state. You can see that it looks like. Uh, Georgia's got about 33 events posted. Looks like Florida's got 20. Texas has 16. You know, all over the country. But you can see what's going on and and plan accordingly. So back to the presentation, and I will answer. I see some questions coming in. I will answer. Back to the presentation. Uh, number two, uh, what we love to see uh, during National Health Center Week is for health centers to connect with elected officials. In our webinar, uh, our second to last webinar, we discussed uh, engaging with elected officials. So uh, the same rules apply. You know, you'll want to invite your legislators early. You can reach out to their schedule or uh, let them know that you've got something up. Now, there has been a little bit of a shift this year because of what's going on in Congress that, that you know, maybe not everybody's going to be home for the August recess. This does not mean that you can't invite them, and this does not mean that there aren't other opportunities throughout the month of August to engage with legis legislators as well. So keep that in mind. Um, once you've extended the invite, remember that you know their schedules are, are are constantly filling up and also being managed by others. So there is a chance that you're going to have to be persistent and follow up and say, you know, can we get this confirmation? It, have you confirmed this date for for the for the congressman, for the congresswoman, for the senator, whoever, and uh, you know, remember that you might have to, you might, it might take more than one phone call to to confirm that they're going to be attending your event. Uh, remember to be flexible. Uh, so, if if you have a, you know, if your huge huge event is on is right on August 13th, and uh, the elected official can't make it, you know, obviously go on with your event. But if they say, well, I can't make it to the big event, but I can come and do a tour of your health center the next day, accept that. And perhaps it, you can design it that way. You can take them around. It's a great opportunity for pictures, uh, you know, and, and all of that. So remember to be flexible, think outside the box, you know, and, and think about how you can accommodate them, but also you can, you know, kind of make it work for, for, for your own purposes as well. And always, always, always remember, no matter what you're doing, as you're uh, hosting legislators to keep it nonpartisan. And we are coming up on an election period. Again, if you are going to be inviting anybody who's running for office, you have to invite candidates across the board who are who are in the running. You can't lean towards one one group or one party or another. So keep that in mind and 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 always practice that as you're as you're engaging with legislators that everything must be nonpartisan because health centers uh, benefit greatly from bipartisan support and that's part of the reason why it, you know we we celebrate health center week every year is, is 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 because we're one of the that's one of the unique things about health centers that we're one of the programs that really benefits from that from that bipartisan support so please keep that in mind um so again i wanted to say uh, and this is back to what i was speaking to earlier it is not too late to nominate a hero uh we as i mentioned before that's the theme this year we're celebrating healthcare heroes uh we are going to be recognizing those individuals uh that's another great way to also engage with your legislators let's say you've nominated somebody at your health center uh maybe maybe a provider 
uh, and, and you know that that person is going to be recognized, you know, it would be a great time to invite a legislator to your health center, maybe at the time that that person is going to be recognized, or maybe asking that legislator, hey, would you mind taking a picture with this person, and then and then you, and you're able to share that image or post it. Uh, just some quick guidelines about that. As I mentioned, this was a contest that we, this is one of the contests, and I don't want to confuse anybody, but uh, that we are, uh, doing during National Health Center Week. Uh, nominations are due next week, July 27th. Uh, it is going to be, you know, it's, it's really about recognizing a staff member, a leader, board member, anybody who really lives and breathes that health center mission that goes beyond the call of duty to make sure that, that their health center is providing uh, the utmost quality care to patients in the community. Uh, the instructions are are listed on our website. But basically what will happen, uh, you will submit your nominations. Uh, you can submit as, you know, multiple. There will be five finalists that will be uh, selected and announced on social media the week before uh, National Health Center Week kicks off. Uh, this will all be on NAC's Facebook page, by the way. Uh, there will be a voting period, and then that the hero that is chosen will be announced again, on that Monday, August 13th, and we'll be recognizing them. So if you do have anybody in mind, uh, you can fill out a form that's available on our website. I can share this information in my follow-up email. And you can email those forms to my colleague, Marisol, who spoke uh, actually on our last webinar, uh, and you can get those nominations into her. But think about how you can align that with engaging legislators as well. So if you're not able to get uh, elected official to come uh, to your health center, there is always the opportunity that you could go to an elected official. And remember, personal visits are a very effective way to communicate with your elected officials. So if they're not able to meet with, meet with you locally, maybe you can go to the district office, maybe you can go to your state legislators. The same things apply again. Make sure that you confirm your meeting in advance and Make sure that even if you're not unable to meet with the actual person, you, you're meeting with the staff member and then recognizing them. And, of course, when you're visiting them, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be like you're giving them a tour. But you kind of want to have some issues. You want to know, you know, exactly what you want to say. Uh, you know, we want to say thank you for your continued support. Uh, you know, know what's going on in terms of, of of health issues in your state. And and don't And it doesn't have to be a long, long meeting. Um, and if you would like to bring other people from your health center or patients or, or volunteers or board members, it's also a great opportunity to do so. But just remember to keep that group uh, manageable, so probably about four to six people. Um, again, back up to hosting elected officials. Um, just remember, if you are having uh, legislators come to your health center, you want to give them notice. You want to be flexible, as we discussed. If they are unable to attend, again, same thing, invite the staff member, have them down, and treat them as you would that legislator. Don't expect them to stay, but also be very, very diligent or vigilant, actually, I guess, about your timing. So if they have said that they're going to arrive at 10 a.m., be ready at 10 a.m. because their schedules are so packed that if they can only stay for an hour, they've only got that hour. And, you know, their schedule is trying to, to, to shuffle them to, the, to their next meeting, to their next event, uh, to their next engagement. After the visit uh, is wrapped up, be sure that you send a thank you and that you publicly thank them in some way. And, again, if you're unable to get them to come during, during Health Center Week proper, don't give up. They can, you know, we kind of have dubbed uh, August as National Health Center Week or Health Center Month, if you will. So kind of throughout the month of August is really a time that we're celebrating that. So if they're unable to make it during the week, think about, you know, other opportunities for them to come at, during 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 August and, and just remember to be persistent. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, exactly during that week, exactly on a day. It, it, it's all fine as long as you, as long as you're doing your part to engage with them. That's really what we're what we're hoping for you to do. So again, um, just real quick about you know sponsors and you know a lot, National Health Center Week is a great time again to to not only engage with legislators but uh, also get sponsorship opportunities. Uh, some, sometimes, and I saw one of the questions that came in 
Um, it was uh, in regard to, uh, you know, sponsorships and and NAC making connections and promoting events. So NAC doesn't necessarily promote events for health centers. I mean, we do have our uh, we do have our event module on the website, and we do share events as they're you know posted and shared on social media and all of that. But really, we work closely with the sponsors, and they let us know what they want. And based on that, uh, we have to uh, then identify who would be a good match for them. So uh, remember, there are different types of sponsorships, and 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 it doesn't always have to be NAC. It could be you you as well who are reaching out and finding them. Uh, but you could get in in kind. You could get cash. You could also just get participation. Uh, but if you are reaching out to sponsors directly, you want to you know make sure you have a clear uh, description of what your event is. Make a potential list based on people that maybe you've worked with in a, in the past. Uh, make your initial contact and request. Make sure that you're able to produce results based on what you've agreed to. So if the sponsor says, you know, we'd like to see, you know, at least 10 kids, you know, uh, you know, show up and, and get a health screening and they'd like, we'd like them to have a picture with the logo, you know, try to make, make good on that and make sure that you're able to, to follow through on your end. And then, of course, again, after the event, follow up say thank you and, and try to preserve and nurture that relationship so that perhaps they, they, you can get that same support in coming years. Um, the fourth tip about National Health Center Week is spreading the word. Uh, we really, really, really want uh, you guys to get out and let people know about what's going on. Last year on social media, National Health Center Week, the hashtag alone had about 50 million impressions. We had uh, individual, uh, we had uh, senators, uh, we had HHS, we had, uh, you name it, everybody tweeting, uh, posting, sharing pictures. We had sponsors about National Health Center Week. So you should do the same. It's a really great opportunity to spread the word, and we've made it pretty easy for you to do that. So if you are active on social media, which I hope many of you are, you can tweet and post about uh, National Health Center Week with the hashtag. NHCW18 and CHD Superpower. You can also upload a cover image uh, of the National Health Center Week uh, promotional poster as your Facebook page. Excuse me. You can put it on your website. Um, if you are going to be hosting elected officials, ask them if they will post and share and retweet your stuff with, with the hashtag. Uh, don't be shy about working with the media. So, uh, you know, reach out to your local paper uh, with your local radio. Build those relationships. Ask them, you know, pitch to them something, you know, that's going on with your event so that they uh, might have an interest in, and showcase it. Uh, you'll want to treat media contacts, you know, it, kind of like VIPs because, remember, you know, you're kind of – that you're, you're scratching their, their back, they're scratching yours in a way. But we have made some uh, media templates that you can use that include a, a sample press release, a letter to the editor, and an opinion editorial that you can use. And uh, we, will, we are also glad to help you with any uh, assistance you might have in reaching out to uh, other publications online, uh, TV, or radio. Um, if you go to uh, the National Health Center Week website, you will be able to, and if you go under our tools uh, and look under the, the media, uh, media toolkit or, and our social media tools, we have some great, great resources for you to be able to spread the word, uh, both in traditional media and social media. So I definitely encourage you guys to check those out. Uh, and if you if if you need any inspiration or looking uh, for you know kind of how to, I would encourage you to visit um, the Health Center Advocacy Network's page on Twitter and kind of see what I mean. Um, I can I'm happy to show you guys actually I, I can show you now uh, you know what I mean by you know kind of promoting Health Center Week <clears throat> on your Twitter pages. So uh, excuse me uh, everyone I had. I lost my voice a little bit over the weekend, so I apologize if it's a little bit raspy. Um, but uh, so I'm going to show you now what I mean. So this is our Twitter page right now. Uh, this is the Health Center Advocacy Network. Hopefully all of you guys are following. As you can see, we've updated our cover photo to promote the week. Um, I have put the hashtag um, in our bio. As you can see, you know, we're saying get ready for National Health Center Week. 
uh, what's your CHC superpower? Um, so we, we've kind of got that covered, and you know we've been promoting uh, the National Health Center Week store. We've been promoting promoting the, the Healthcare Hero Award, and kind of any other uh, you know proclamations and things like that that are coming in. Uh, you can see Ohio just got a, a proclamation from their governor that, pro that was proclaiming National Health Center Week um, there, and we posted that. So there are a number of ways that you can get engaged and, and join the conversation. So definitely encourage you to do that. Um, <clears throat> and moving on to the next slide, just some other tips in terms of uh, National Health Center Week. Uh, you know, you want to have a, a you definitely got to have teamwork to make things happen. So kind of establish your National Health Center Week team, what you're going to need in terms of planning and support and what benchmarks you want to meet. Uh, make sure that for whatever it is you're doing, you have that board leadership and support. Um, you definitely want to create a committee and maybe work with other partner organizations uh, to to carry out those, you know, large-scale events like, like a health fair or like a, a back-to-school drive. Um, again, I said this uh, more than once, but be persistent in all that you do. You know, you want to create a timeline for reaching out to elected officials, reaching out to the media or any other in, in, in you know, special VIP um, in, invitees that would be coming to the event. Uh, but, you know, remember to be persistent in that and, and don't give up. Uh, make sure that you have uh, you've kind of incorporated those uh, regular updates for for sponsors, for legislators, for special people in your communications plans. So if you're sending out, you know, an email, a weekly email saying, you know, we're getting ready for National Health Center Week, you know, letting people know what what's going on, uh, when to mark their calendars, uh, you know, where where do I sign up for this? How do I get involved with that? Uh, make sure that you you have that, you know, very clear and outline so that people know exactly where they can get the information so that they can come to your events and participate. And then again, always uh, say thank you uh, to those people who are supporting your event, who are helping you, and who are coming to, uh, who are coming to participate. Um, another uh, great way to participate in National Health Center Week, uh, if you don't necessarily have events planned and you're, you know, you're not planning to host anybody uh, for a health center visit is to participate in our annual National Health Center Week picture and video contest. Uh, we do it every year. The contest this year kicks off on August 1st, and uh, the submission period goes through August 31st. Uh, the contest is a really, really, really great way to get publicity for your health center. Winners get some great prizes, including a National Health Center Week sponsorship for the next year. They also are uh, the, the picture contest winners get featured in our calendar. Uh, we have uh, the video contest winners are, are promoted on our website and, are, and on social media. Uh, it's a and, and, and along with the theme, it's a great way to use the theme to uh, to showcase the great work that your health center does in the community. So if you uh, if you have some great pictures already. It doesn't, you know, the pictures don't have to be brand new. Uh, they can also be drawings. We encourage you to submit those. Uh, we also encourage you to submit your videos as well. Um, similar to the Healthcare Heroes contest, uh, it is also a contest that is uh, centered on social media. So finalists are voted on uh, by, you know, by health center advocates who uh, who are following us on social media. And then we announce the winner, the winners in September. And those winners, again, are given some great prizes. Uh, so if you have interest in participating in the contest, I encourage you to join uh, our webinar and, and that's coming up on July 25th. It will give you all the information you need to know about how to participate in the contest, tips for winning pictures and videos, uh, the, the timeline for, you know, the, the actual submission and then the voting and then the winner announcements. Uh, so if you have interest in that, join the webinar next week. It's July 25th, and it will be at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Some other tools and resources. Again, as I mentioned, if you go to healthcenterweek.org, you can access our media toolkit and templates. You can get event ideas. You can get a template resolution or proclamation. So if you're going to request a proclamation from your, from your city, town, 
state. You can get you you can already have it written up and give pass that template over, and all all they will have to do is fill in kind of the basics. Uh, it also has some resources for uh, photos and videos. You can see the winners from last year's picture and video contest uh, and, and see what they did to, uh, to make it happen and, and how they're being featured. And then we definitely encourage you to go to the National Health Center Week store. Uh, actually, the deadline for that uh, to get those orders in is actually August 1st. Uh, that's where you can find, uh, you can you can download digital images, you can get high resolution images if you get our digital image package. You'll get all the characters and, and the people from the poster, the fonts, the colors. Uh, you can get personalized banners, you can get t-shirts, bags, water bottles, you name it. Um, another thing that we're really excited about this year is that we're going to be selling capes, again, in line with our superhero theme. Uh, so we have those available for, for adult and kid sizes. Uh, you'll want to get those orders in as soon as possible to avoid any rush uh, shipping charges and, and, and to make sure that you get everything, you know, while supplies last. Uh, we also have bilingual materials, which is very important. I know for, especially for some of you that might be serving populations that, uh, that first language is not English. Uh, so if you are going to be, uh, to reaching out and trying to uh, advertise to those populations. We have bilingual materials. We have our posters available in Spanish. We also have uh, some sample social media items that are available in Spanish, so, so things like tweets and stuff like that that you can push out that are all in Spanish also available on the website. Again, just another plug for the National Health Center Week store. Um, this is where you're going to go to be able to get all of your items to promote your events. Uh, the National Health Center Week store is open. You can get uh, a number of items. And Zan Kenfrest, who's a, who's a great, great, great partner, is happy to work with you to incorporate your logo and, and even your own custom designs if you have them for, for your materials. But you really want to get those orders in as soon as possible so that you um, are able to promote your events and, and you have everything you need. And you can see here on the side is just a picture, an example of the adult cape and a picture of, uh, of the Health Center Week t-shirt with, with our design on it and, you know, the list of sponsors and all of that, just to give you some examples. But the store has a number of items that I think will support you in your events. So uh, be sure, be sure to check that out. Um, I just want to do a quick plug, just so that we're not forgetting, but you know, we wouldn't be able to uh, celebrate National Health Center Week without the uh, support of our sponsors, and uh, we have some great ones this year, uh, namely our gold sponsors, Athena Health and McKeffin, um, our silver sponsors, BKD, Centene, NextGen, Pfizer, Welch Allen and WellCare, uh, AmeriHealth Caritas, Benko Dental, Benko Dental Equinical Works, uh, and Henry Shine, and then of course we have Nonstop Wellness. Uh, so we want to definitely thank them and then also thank all our partners. Um, but as as you guys are hosting events, uh, be sure to also say thanks to sponsors as well, and be sure to check out some of uh, some of what they've done to to promote the week as well, uh, whether it be on social media or on their websites and 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 on our blog. Uh, so, if you have any questions about National Health Center Week, how you can uh, celebrate, what you can do, how you post events, how you get access to uh, our our media materials and all that stuff, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. The other uh, thing I do want to say is that at your events, one one of the best ways to recruit advocates um, is to simply just have a sign-up sheet available uh, to go around, ask people if they're interested in becoming a health center advocate. Uh, you can also, you know, give out, you know, in, in terms of ordering stuff from the National Health Center Week store, it's a great time to order. Maybe, you know, you can order a, a mugs or a frisbee or, or 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 something like that, where you can hand it out to people and perhaps it has some information about becoming an advocate, you know, either in it or on it or something like that. So, you know, be creative in terms of, of, of your events and make sure that, you know, you're always not only promoting the great work of your health center but also, you know, making sure that people are engaged and that, you know, they're coming to your event and leaving, you know, with a little bit more knowledge about, uh, you know, the broader health center program and, and, and why we advocate and why it's important. 
So if if there are not any questions, um, I am happy to to end a little bit early uh, and give you guys ten minutes of your day back. But if you do have questions, uh, feel free to type to type them in the chat box, and I will do my best to answer them. And I will definitely be following up with with you guys. Uh, with the link to the webinar and some other resources uh, for National Health Center Week, so you guys can make it uh, the best the best that we've had yet. And and again, I'd like to thank all of you for for participating um, from year to year, and and if this is your first time as well, uh, really really appreciate it. It's really great to see uh, all of all of this work come to life, and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you. Any questions? All righty. Well, again, I will be following up with everyone. Uh, I want to make one uh, announcement that our next webinar will be a strategic planning webinar, thinking about, uh, you know, our kind of final, finalizing the program, uh, wrapping things up, and then we will also then convene again in September with our final projects. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to all of that. If you guys uh, have questions about that as well, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'll be sending out a reminder email, and you guys should have it on your calendar. But I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to join me today. And hopefully, uh, National Health Center Week 2018 will be even bigger and better than last year. So thank you, guys.